And we're live! See, I timed that perfectly. Intentionally. So if you didn't know, that was uh, a song I released earlier this year. Sorry, adjusting my mic. Uh, Billy, don't lose that number. Phil Collins cover that I did with a guest soloist, Myrone. If you haven't uh, checked it out, it's on all the streaming stuff, as well as I think I have a video on my YouTube channel. Just Google it, you'll find it. Good morning, it's Saturday, December 17. I love this iPad, it tells me everything I need to know. When I need to know. Is it weird that uh, you guys probably think in the five minutes of the intro I'm kind of getting stuff ready? But today I was already ready, so I was just lurking in the comments and watching everyone comment. Just so you know, sometimes I'm not paying attention to the comments in the intro, and sometimes I'm totally reading everything. So, good morning to Matt Dela Hunt, Scott Sanders, Mr. James, Rotel Music, Terry 3Gs, Ryan Hall. You know, guys, it's going to get cold in a couple days, so make sure you're staying warm. Robert Keane, Chris R., Mike Jones, Mike Wentworth, Ben Coombs is here. What's the, what's the temperature up where you are, Ben? I need to have like a, a, a live video feed to Ben so he can be my like um, Willard Scott and show me, you know, talk about the weather while I start. Lawrence Petros, good morning. We got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. Uh, it's the last week until Christmas, holidays. You guys ready for this? I'm ready for it to be over. <laughs> Not that I don't like Christmas and the holidays. It's just that when you travel or if you have family coming in or um, you haven't done your Christmas shopping yet or uh, it gets stressful, right? Or you have a big family, kids. I don't have kids. I got dogs. It gets stressful. So it's probably the most stressful time of the year uh, for a lot of people. What do you guys think about the holidays, Christmas, all that stuff? I feel like uh, New Year's Day is like the biggest Sunday. You know, it just feels like the weekend, the big, the world's, the, the longest weekend ever is over. So you have this kind of like deflation going on. Four hours west of Ben I am, and it's one Celsius. Oh my God. What is that in Fahrenheit? 45 in Burbank, 25 in Kansas City. Oh my gosh. I think Serbia, what's the temperature in Serbia? Citrus marmalade. Um, yeah, some pluses and minuses for Christmas. I think it's a 50-50 split. Let's call it a 50-50 split. Uh, I think I'm, I'm not done with Christmas shopping and I can't order anything online that will be here in time. So y'all are getting, uh, guitar picks. So, uh, what, what are we going to talk about today, guys? You guys want to see some, uh, some new stuff. Bunting Guitars is here. Have an amazing year, man. Thank you for everything. I hope you caught the video that I posted yesterday. It's kind of a spur of the moment thing, but I basically jammed straight through for eight minutes. I didn't even realize it was eight minutes long, but I, I did a, a one take jam of uh, playing on an elevated jam tracks on my bunting willow. So it's fun. Thank you, Krager. The bunting is amazing because they make the guitars amazing. Yeah, um, it's not too bad today here. I think it's uh, 40s here in Nashville. But I know we're uh, bracing for the uh, cold snap later this week. So, I don't know, whatever, that happens every year. So if you guys didn't know, uh, our friends at Novo Guitars, I didn't wear a Novo Guitar shirt. I wore a Frontier shirt. Check out this record label. Uh, AOR record label, by the way. Nova Guitars yesterday released a long-awaited 
new, brand new model um, that's unlike the designs that they've had in the past, like my Cirrus. So this is this is the Novo sh Ooh. the Novo shape that uh, most people are familiar with, right? They've done, so this is a Novo Cirrus J, J meaning kind of like a Jazzmaster Jaguar vibe. Um, the Cirrus models were essentially this body shape. Uh, the Mirus model is kind of like this body shape, but it was uh, bound and semi-hollow, but it still came from this shape. So this is kind of like the iconic Novo shape that they've had for the longest time. And they finally came out with a brand new design that I'm excited about. And some of you are excited and some of you, I've been reading comments on the forums were like, meh. Uh, and we're gonna talk about it. What's up my secret machines? Mark's gas station. A lot of gas this year. Oh yeah, I got one by the way. So this is the new Idris model, which if you're friends of Red Shull, if you've been on Red Shull's channel, you might have seen something similar to this that he had a couple months ago. And if Red is here, he might come in later. Um, he had a, a different kind of configuration. He had like a cooter caster, but he kind of was the first one to publicly show off the shape, the new design. So it's, it's Novo Strat, basically. Now, if you know Novo, they kind of had a Strat a couple years ago, or they previously had a Strat style, which was basically the, um, <laughs> so many stands, which is basically the Cirrus guitar with Strat pickups and a trim. Um, and it was cool. It was a nice option, but I think what they were going for was a dedicated Strat style model. And uh, I saw the first, you know, a while back. I, I mean, this is a couple of years they've been designing this. And I remember the first prototypes that they almost put out maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, similar shape, but different pickup configuration, kind of a different design. And I think they went back to just the classic. Now, this isn't just the normal Strat. If you know me, I'm a, I'm a big Strataholic. I think I have more Strat style guitars than any other model, like Tele or Humbucker model. I have way too many Strats. Uh, traditional Strats, reverse Strats, Twisted strats, uh, HSS, super strats. I like strats. I'm a strat guy. So I know what I, I like in strats. I know what I like in traditional strats. Um, and this is different enough for me where I was like, when I played it, uh, the blue one in the promo video that came out yesterday on the socials, uh, I instantly felt like this is different than the strats that I'm used to. And I'm gonna talk about it, but let's hear it. Why not? I should turn on an amp, why not? Um, yeah, Christian Hanley, yes. My, my Sen Strat is staying because to me, it's the best of both worlds. My Sen Strat is the perfect traditional uh, Strat style. And this is one, one louder as Nigel would say. It's a little bit different and it makes me play a little bit differently. And it's different enough to where I was like, oh, I gotta have one. Cause like, who needs another Strat? If you got, I don't know, 10 Strats? D did I really need another Strat style guitar? No, but this is just, this is not another Strat style guitar is what my point is. It sounds like a Strat. I'll give you that much. 
sounds like a really good strut. The body is, yeah, it's a little bit offset compared to a regular Strat. It doesn't feel bigger, if that's what you're asking. It might look bigger on me, because I'm a small guy, and then, you know, the Novo headstock is big. So I think the dimensions uh, fit together, you know? And I don't know much about guitar design, but it's almost like you have to really get the ratio between headstock size and body size really dialed in or else it's gonna look awkward. And there's some guitars out there that have like, you know, a regular size body and then they have like a dinky little headstock and that's a big turnoff to me. The weight, okay, you guys wanna hear specs on this. Uh, I don't know what the weight is. I don't think they have it listed. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what, what about this guitar that's different than a, a typical Strat that I'm used to uh, that made me want this guitar. Um, first off, when I first played the blue model, I noticed that the, the fingerboard, the radius felt really comfortable. And I asked them and it's not, I don't think it's a typical radius spec, but it's nine and a half to 14. Uh, so it's really comfortable for cording down here and, and pretty flat up here for like, you know, shredding if you wanted to. Normally with compound radius, radiuses, radii, compound radii, uh, I'm used to like nine and a half to 12 or 10 to 16 maybe, 10 to 14, 10 to 16, right? Uh, so nine and a half to 14 is kind of like bridging those compound radii together. Um, and I can, I can kind of tell the difference. I can tell that it was different than what I felt before. Enough. And another big thing, and you, you'll probably think that I'm really stupid about uh, talking about this, but a big problem I have with strats, traditional strats, is the control layout, particularly where the volume knob is relative to the bridge pickup. If you look at a typical traditional Strat, I mean, the, the knob is basically touching the screw of the bridge pickup. So it's in the way. There's nothing you can do. It's going to be in the way. So the fact that they shifted this, maybe a, a, a knob's length, Yes, I said a knob's length downwards, so I have more space to put my hand there. That's kind of a big deal to me. Because I've had some strats where I, I put in um, a single volume, single tone, and I skipped the normal volume uh, space and put it where the first tone knob would be. And that's kind of too low, but this is um, right in the right place. Because like when I'm, picking, especially by the bridge. There's no knob here in the way, which I really like. Rotile Music likes the original position for volume swells. I can still do that. It's not, I mean, I don't do a lot of volume swells. But you need, um, you need big hands, I guess. <laughs> Okay, spec wise, and I'll get to the tremolo in just a second. Okay, yeah, shell pink. So I got the shell pink with matching headstock. I think it's super classy. I, I don't have a shell pink. I have pink guitars, right? Like I have neon pink. I've got that uh, pink uh, super strat. Uh, shell pink, we've got the tremolo, okay, the tremolo is by a company called Manmade, M-A-N-N. -N. I'm assuming the, uh, the guy's last name is Man. But uh, Manmade tremolo, I've never technically had a tremolo like this, Manmade. Um, 
Really cool backplate as well. I believe the uh, the block is steel. And I think Dennis was telling me they tried um, other materials, but steel, there's something about it that, that made it um, sound a little bit sweeter. Um, so that's cool. And when I was examining this, when I first played the blue one, I was like, you know, this reminds me, I used to have a, a PRS Santana model back in the day, like early 2000s. And this looks exactly like that tremolo. And I guess uh, man, Chris Quinn just said it. Yeah, he was the guy that came up with the PRS trim. So this is very similar. It's not exact, but it's very similar to the, the PRS trim. And if you know those trims, they're pretty comfortable. Uh, it's slightly floating. I mean, you can see it's not totally decked to the uh, the wood. So you can get a little like half tone, maybe a quarter tone up. But it's enough to float so you can get that nice floating uh, feel. Let's do this. Really comfortable, stays in tune. I don't think I've tuned it since I brought it home. Let's see where we're at on tuning. Of course, the weather. So I guess this is my Christmas present to myself. Um, and other than that, this, the, the pickups, Fralin Vintage Hot Strats. Fralin Vintage Hot. So I believe that's their medium output because I think they, they make one hotter. I don't know. Um, they're good pickups. They're kind of like the, your traditional 60s style uh, pickups. Um, and the neck, oh, the neck, C-shape, and it's actually thinner than what I typically per get or prefer. And that might be changing nowadays. Not that I'm getting older, but I might like a thinner neck. Before, I like Music Life with Arthur Gonzalez. Thank you so much, man. Got to get that morning kicked off with coffee or taco funds. Man, it's going to be a donut fun today. I feel like a donut. Appreciate it, Arthur. Um, what was I talking about? Pickups? Uh, was that what I was talking about? Pickups? No, neck. So, um, this is a thinner neck. This feels almost like a... a an early 60s Strat type of neck that I've played. Uh, in the past, I've always gotten Vs or soft Vs. Like my, my Sen has a really nice soft V shape. Something a little bit chunkier, I usually gravitate towards. But nowadays, I'm like, you know, so this feels different enough to where it makes me play a little bit different. Um, I, it's hard to explain. Like when guitars feel different, then you um, subconsciously have to shift your playing a little bit to compensate for this new feeling guitar. So that's why I like having, you know, guitars that feel different, not just sound different, but like big necks, thin necks, um, flat wounds, jazz strings, nines, you know, Floyds, all that stuff. So. People wonder why we buy so many guitars. At least for me, I have I like the variety because it kind of makes me play differently, depending on you know what gear I'm using. Um, what else? I mean, that's the meat of it. So essentially, this is it. It feels like a different style of strat, but it's not too. Um, far away from the traditional stuff and you get the sound what are you guys talking about 
I'm gonna take questions, and then I'm gonna play some more stuff. Let's see, who tagged me? Basil Tiffany, the guitar is making my special place feel funny. I agree. Uh, so what I was told, I think they were, they did an initial release yesterday of, was it eight maybe? Ten? I can't remember. Um, and they sold out of all of them. So they are making more and I guess you can order custom ones now. Jerome Kremen got an EVH standard. Congratulations. Those are good guitars. Um, something that I might do, and I was looking last night at some other Fralin pickups, just to make it a little bit different than a typical Strat. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like the, the blades that are, uh, the dual blade Strat pickups that Fralin makes. It's like a Z, but it's not a Z. What are they called? I demoed them before in, a, an RS Guitar Works build. Oh, what is it called? Somebody. Split Blade, I think it's called. Those are fun pickups. Those are basically noiseless Strat pickups, but they look cool. They look different. And that might uh, be cool in something like this, because this, you know, this looks like a cool Strat-influenced guitar. But if I want to go one louder, as Nigel would say, Maybe I'll put those split blades. Slacker Deluxe, thank you, split blade, yeah. Jordan Y, this is called Shell Pink. This is kind of a traditional Fender uh, color. And he got a white Gretsch, nice. Help me, there are, fr yes, these are Fralin Vintage Hots. Is that what I said? TR Youngblood, for this guitar, I don't know, TR, why don't you, uh... so it's kind of flesh colored. So why don't we, why don't we run with that? TR's a, a master. <laughs> Looks like a Band-Aid or Cantaloupe. It, it, it's gonna look different on camera too, because like I have, Filters, I guess, on my camera that make the colors a little bit different. LUTs, I have a LUT. Um, there's a Crayola crayon with this color. And I can't think of it. But TR, I'll let you be the designer of the, the band, uh, the, the band name, the, uh, the guitar name. Make it, make it PG-13. Yeah, I don't know, like, when I first see it, it, it reminds me of, like, when you were a kid and you were, like, coloring or making drawings with crayons, like this would be the color that you would put for like a skin tone for obviously like a, uh, an Anglo person. <laughs> but um, this reminds me of the color. I'd be like, oh, that's skin tone colored. Dog pecker pink. They just call it pecker. <laughs> Eric Warrington salmon. This would be farm-raised salmon. You know how farm-raised salmon is kind of duller than wild salmon? Flesh. LP 
3D pedals, you're right. This is kind of has like a silly putty. If you're, <laughs> wait, sorry, BC Rich. Silly putty pink. <laughs> to think okay what foods yeah it's kind of peach colored that's a that's a funny uh thing when you when people say peach colored peaches don't come in this color right i don't think i've ever seen a peach an actual peach this color um and it's not really pepto bismol pink it's uh, i don't know a food color vegan pink but do I like it yes I'm playing it every day because um, if you've ever played a Novo guitar just any kind of Novo there's a feel there's a, a build quality to all of them I mean all of the Novo guitars I've ever played are amazing quality uh, and you can feel it in the in the fingerboard. You can feel it in the neck So to have that that I've always liked in the, all the other models and to have that Feel of a guitar in a Strat mo model, which is like obviously my favorite type of guitar uh, I think it's a perfect pairing Dan Graham is it burnt sienna? Is that what it was? That sounds very familiar familiar that might be it. Thurman is here. Good to see you, man. Did you order one, Thurman? I know you've been talking that uh, you wanted one for Christmas. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Santa grabbed you one. I don't know. Yeah, I thought burnt sienna was a brown thing. I don't know. I got to get remember the big 200 box or something of, of Crayola crayons High gain. Wow. I wouldn't call that high gain. It's definitely gain. Hold on. TR wants band-aids because it works great on deep cuts. <laughs> Television Canyons doesn't like it. There's, uh, there's a, you either love it or you hate it. And I think um, that goes for a lot of Novos in general. It's like you either love them or you, you don't get it or you, you just hate the, the, the style. It's a little bit too different for some people. And um, I totally get that. And there was a lot of people that were like, well, you know, they had the Cirrus S, which, like I said, was basically their Cirrus, bo Cirrus body shape with Strat pickups. And people said, a lot of people were saying that, oh, you know, I was fine with the Cirrus S, but to t I've played the Cirrus S. I've played all the Cirrus models. Um, and there was something about it, not to say that it was bad, but it, it felt stiff to me, stiffer. 
Um, it didn't feel comfortable as a Strat guitar to me, as a uh, self-proclaimed Strat connoisseur, <laughs> I guess. No, but the ones that I played, the Cirrus S was probably my least favorite model. Um, it just, it didn't ring the way a Strat should ring. Um, and it could have been the body size, it could have been just the setup. But also the body size, like Strat pickups in that body shape, it looked small. Like the, the Strat pickups looked too small for that body size. So I think this is a little more, um, like the ratios are just right. <laughs> Jay Wilson likes Pink Taco. Well, then I might get sued by uh, Pink Taco or Dave Friedman. Thurman Wan's Cirrus S is really cool looking. My Secret Machine. The light speed is on right now with a dirty amp. of pink guitars in comparison. So I've got uh, a video demo coming out for this other guitar that happens to be pink. And I don't know what they call it, but this is a guitar from a company called Pure Salem. This is their La Bruja model. Uh, and I'm working on the, I'm editing the, the video as we speak. But this is, this is pinker. I don't know, this is more. Okay, so I'm looking at the, my camera my monitor, and I'm looking at here, the colors are not matching. What you're seeing at home is pinker than what this is in person. Meaning what you're seeing at home, this is duller in color uh, in person. So everything that you're seeing is, has, is kind of oversaturated. It looks nice on video, but it's not uh, exactly um, a one-to-one -one Reflection of the uh, actual color. Oh, hold on. This is a very awkward place to put this. All right. Um. So now I'm looking at the TV, uh, the monitor, and it almost looks kind of like an orange, orange creamsicle on video, or almost like a natural finish on video um but in person yeah it's weird man it's such an interesting color this is pink yes the amp lights are pink i kind of feel like they look purple on the screen though so maybe uh the filter or the lut that i'm using has a little bit of bluish hue to it maybe jose oh yeah that's right thank you jose world cup final y'all i haven't been watching at all but it's argentina france um i root for argentina <laughs> i'll admit i like uh i've always liked the uh, actually the first the only time i ever went to an actual real uh, football game, soccer game, was in Argentina. Um, I forget who it was. It's like Boca Juniors versus somebody. Uh, and it wasn't at, um, I can't remember. It wasn't at uh, the River Plate Stadium, but somewhere else. It was fun. Are you guys getting like an orange creamsicle color on video? Or maybe that's just this particular screen. Fuzz and Univibe, okay. 
Christian Hanley, the GE7 right now is not plugged in. It's just for show. But this is the uh, modded XTS modded EQ, which uh, focuses only on the mid-range frequencies. The Book of X special. I haven't figured out where I'm going to put it yet on my um, board because I don't have any room right now. Okay, let's see comments. Uh, can we hear it through a different amp or would you need to set that up? Let's see. Let's do it through the basement. How does it compare to the Tyler? It's totally different. The James Tyler is the super strat of super strats, meaning it hints at the traditional strat very little. I mean, it, compared to this, this is very traditional strat feeling to me. More, well, more than the, the Tyler. I, I would say, like, I could be totally happy with my Sen, and then this, and then the Tyler. Because it's almost like my, my Sen Fullerton is the traditional. This is one louder, and then the Tyler would be 10 louder, I guess. Okay, uh, basement. <laughs> Like that better? What, what what do you hear the difference? Because I wasn't paying attention. The difference in tone between the Friedman and the Bassman. What are you guys hearing? It's a little twangier. What are you guys hearing the differences or what do you like about the the bassman versus the friedman fuller tighter okay so this is a um, i guess this is a six i can't remember anymore it might be a 66 67 bassman Mustafa, this is the basement right now.
jump to the Freedmen. Okay, let's see if I can do this without blowing up any apps. I'm on my dirty channel, so. I think the, the Freedmen is a little squishier, right? I think you guys were saying the basement was tighter, but I f it feels like the Freedman is is tighter. And then the basement. There's a little more mid range, I think, in the basement. It's like more focused mid range, which is weird. It's a little more open, tighter. So, I mean, the Friedman is kind of designed for, I wouldn't say high gain, but gain. That's where its strong suit is. LPD, he's got the good ears. The basement sounds more traditional and what I'd expect to hear. Nice low mid growl and smooth top and a little loose. Yeah, the Friedman sounds tighter and less organic. Yeah, it sounds more modern. It's a more modern design, right? Uh, the tre treble is less smooth. Steve from Boston, slept late. You lucky man, you. Yeah, I should put them all together. I have a, a second um, Torpedo Captor X that I'm gonna hook up so I can have two amps at the same time. How about this one? Might as well, right? Try the divided by. Do you guys refer to this as like instead of saying divided by 13, do you just call this divided by or 13 slash 13s? I don't know. I think I've always heard divided by without even saying the 13. Where am I? Uh I think this is it. Maybe not. This has more mids, I think, for sure. sounding. Parker, what am I running these into? So right here, this is my uh, amp switcher. It's a Delisle amp speaker selector. It's got four channels, four inputs for uh, amps, and then four inputs for speakers. I'm only using one of the speaker channels for my Torpedo, two notes. Um, and then I've got one, two, three, I think is down here, the sir, and then four. Mm -hmm. 
Well, PD, you should write copy for all of all of my descriptions. Uh, this sounds more Vox. Um, Vox-ish with the breakup in the high mids, yep, while still keeping the lows. Smooth top end with just a little sparkle. Yeah, it's more sparkly for sure. But it's not as overly sparkly as like a traditional Vox, which is why I like it. It's like a smoother Vox. sweet. Okay, let's answer some questions, y'all. My Secret Machine, I have three Novos now, yes. So which one is your favorite? Man... It's hard to say, but right now it's this one because... And it's kind of a cop-out because I'm such a, a Strat person. So this feels at home. Um, the Cirrus J. I love the feel of this, but it's also it's got that Jazzmaster feel, which takes some getting used to if you're not used to that tension and and the way that it rings with this type of bridge. Um, I do love. Probably of all of them. So I have these two, and then I've got the uh, Solus uh, F. Is that what it is? Um, of all of those, this has my favorite neck. Because I spec out this whole guitar. Uh, this one I didn't spec out. This was one of their um, first runs that they, they put out. But they're all pretty much the same specs. Naveen, how to get this sound with a Boss GT6? Unfortunately, I don't have the Boss GT6, so I wouldn't know. Um, but basically, I'm going through a, a, a Vox-style amp, so you could try to model a Vox style amp with maybe a little bit of uh, boost or overdrive in front. And then I just have like a stereo delay. This is the uh, Keeley Halo, the um, Andy Timmons. I like that repeat, it's kind of like dirty. guys uh let's answer a couple questions i gotta cut this one short because i gotta do a bunch of housework prepping for the holidays getting stuff ready fixing things that are broken in the house no i'm just kidding i do need to clean the house for sure um let's see here i'm gonna go back to look at it on this. You guys hearing that humming? Not anymore. Okay, the upper horn is long, G-Funk. It is, when I look at this and I try to find, you know, it's not too, too long. I think it, it works with the dimensions of like the headstock and, and everything. It kind of reminds, remember those Bernie the Bernie guitars from England that were like, I want to say, I don't want to say Hank Marvin and the Shadows used them, but maybe they did. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that shape of horn, Bernie. Not Bernie. What am I thinking of? Is it Bernie? Um, Burns. Thank you. I said Bernie. Bernie is the uh, Les Paul copies. Burns. That's right. 
Mr. Burns. That's right. What is awkward that I noticed uh, with this is the strap button location. And I think someone on the forums commented that it was weird because, you know, in a normal strat, there's enough space right at the, the tip to, to put the strap button, but this is super sharp here. So the only, you know, logical place to put the strap button is like right on top. So when I first put it on, I was like, oh, that's weird. But it's, it hangs fine now. Yeah, everyone was saying the Gibson Victory. I ne was never... I honestly can't remember that guitar. And I saw the photo and I was like, what guitar is that? Gibson Victory. I guess if you look at it like this. I don't know. It's. I think it's all, you know, it's got this Fano touch to it. can I say about this yeah I mean even you know the the heel isn't necessarily like shaved down but it's you know it's a little traditional smooth kind of rounded not hard I really like the back plate is cool looking it's different but uh, you know it feels like a strat like if I'm uh, closing my eyes Like the, the, the whole body feels like a strap. Craiger is saying, do I agree that the headstock looks like a Victorian era ladies boot with the toy toe pointed down? Yeah, I can see, or like, um, Ballet slipper, like a ballet point. G Funk, did I see the hot pink reverse headstock one? Yes. Uh, and I know who owns it. And uh, I have not played it, but uh, he, uh, I believe, was technically the first person that I knew, even before Rhett. He was the first person to have the the Idris shape guitar. Then, and this was back in the day when they were first prototyping it. When I was telling you that they had a different kind of spec on the pickups and everything, and he got a um, special special made one with the Floyd. It's cool. <laughs> No, it's not Matt's. I don't. I, I could never see Matt playing a, a Floyd Rose guitar. <laughs> yeah, I don't see. I haven't seen a lot of um, upside down headstock Novos. I almost got an upside down headstock on my Cirrus J, I think that was, I was toying with that idea, but I wanted it to be a little more traditional. Except for the, the colors, obviously. Yeah, I mean, the pick guard, this is just a white parchment uh, three-ply 
pick guard. I think we were talking about um, maybe like a mint. I think I threw out mint first, but left it up to them, however they wanted to do it. Um, I don't think they had any tortoise shells on their initial release. I know Rhett's on his cooter, cooter Idris, <laughs> that sounds weird, uh, has a, an, an interesting tortoise shell. The Cooter Idris. Well, that's great, Scott. Great to hear it. Your Cirrus build videos prompted me to buy my Cirrus J. That's awesome. Great to hear it. So I should try a tortoise shell on this one? Are we talking brown tortoise shell or kind of like the red, um, the, whatchamacallit, Spitfire stuff? Kreger, thank you. Holiday cleaning fund. That'll very, that'll come in handy. I need to buy some, uh, Swiffers. Thank you. players do you guys ever hang out on the middle pickup i think this is the most underrated strat position never glenn harris Brian S. Guitar's middle pickups have no reason to live. When you uh, pluck them. Sorry, that was a lot of reverb. It's a little bit different than It's nice. It's a little nice, you know? When I was uh, first starting out, when I was like 9, 10, and I got my Strat, the blue one, uh, I didn't know anything about tone. I didn't know anything about gear. And, you know, you have five positions to pick from, five different tones to choose from. And I had no idea what, which uh, tone to, ch to use for, for playing. So um, I figured just put it in the middle because that's, that means it's balanced, you know? So everything I played, whether it was like, you know, or like, any rock songs that I learned, it was on the middle pickup always. So there's like footage of me playing, you know. It sounds cool, but it's it's definitely like I never discovered the the bridge pickup position uh, until I got a humbucker guitar, and I never played the 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 neck, which is funny because now I play the neck all the time. It sounded too mellow for me. It's so funny. But I would never leave the middle position for anything. The middle, okay, Michael Mele, or Meal, Mele, the middle with the tone knob at about halfway. Where's my tone knob? There it is. Well, this is different. Yeah. 
I should say the the tone uh, knobs on this guitar are a little more interactive or, or more usable as far as like. Um, and maybe it's because I modded my other strats so much that I can't do that. So now I'm afraid to change the pickups ever on this guitar because it's kind of like perfect. A lot of blues players will use the middle pickup a lot. Clapton, you know. Al John, good morning. Maligaying Pasco to all my Filipinos. Christian Hanley, I don't think I will be putting the uh, the Tone King switch in this. Probably just keep my Sen with it, and that's the only guitar that has it. Thurman, Merry Christmas. Tell your family I said hello. Yeah, really nice pickups, really even. It's got like those classic strat positions. Without sounding, you know, sometimes you get strat pickups like 50s style that can sound anemic if you're looking for something with a little bit of oomph. Sometimes you want like that crystal clear 50s strat sound, but a lot of times when we think of strats sounds, we think of Stevie Ray Vaughan and um, the heavier sounding strats, Hendrix. <laughs> Probably one of the quackiest strat, uh, position twos that I've have on a strut. Let's check out the sen, because the sen is like my all-time favorite traditional strat. But obviously, it feels different, and it's got some different pickups. And it's got the Tone King switch. It totally feels different. This is slinkier, kind of looser feeling. Whereas this feels a little more I don't want to say tighter, but it just, it's, it's a st straighter feeling uh, neck, um, the radius. I don't know if that makes a difference in tone. But... And I think that might have lighter strings now that I think about it. B, the Tone King switch. It's not the Tone, it's the King Tone switch. So the King Tone, which makes some of the greatest pedals in the world, like the Duelist and the Octoland, and the Fuzz that I use, 
Uh, they make a little rotary switch for your guitar. I think it's a, is it a six position switch? One, two, three. I think it's a six position switch and it kind of acts like a tone notch thing. So each position kind of sounds like a different guitar. I don't know, it's hard to explain. At the lowest position, um, it almost sounds like uh, Brian May or something. Like it almost sounds like you have a, a tone bender or something on. A body, okay, before I go, some of the specs y'all been asking for. Neckwood is tempered maple. So that's dry, kind of baked, or whatever you want to call it, torrified. Uh, fingerboard is East Indian rosewood. Moto inlays, moto dot inlays. The, sh uh, the body is, why can't I see it? Um, doesn't say it on here, really? I don't know, I, th I think it might be ash. It says it on the website. <laughs> what does it say on the website? Am I not seeing this? Um, neck, body. I don't think it's on here. Reply. Yeah, it's not on here. Interesting. All the, all the wood is the same for all the models. If you go to the link that Ben Coombs um, posted, it should say it on there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I do believe it is ash. Tempered pine is what they use for their other stuff, but I think they went different and they wanted to go a little more traditional. Shall we look? Is someone looking? Um, Novo Idris. Let's go. I don't know where it is. Models. Idris. Oh, it is tempered pine. For some reason, I thought they were going different on this. This one is ash. So people are saying, website says tempered pine. Yes. I could have sworn they told me that it was ash. I don't know. It could be uh, maybe the first ones they did in ash and maybe they're deciding, deciding to do tempered pine. Well, according to the website, it's tempered pine, nitro. <coughs> oh, okay. String joy 10 to 48. Maybe that's uh, why it feels a little bit tighter. In the the bottom strings, yeah. Now that makes sense. String Joy is, uh, of course, the uh, the brand here in Nashville. They make very nice strings, all kinds of uh, gauges. Let's see, Cluson Supreme Tuners with staggered posts. I think that's kind of the standard. Emerson Custom Paper and Oil Caps, the good stuff. Matching head, matching peg peg head is kind of the standard. Uh, but I'm sure you can get it whatever you want when you custom order. Medium C neck carve. If this is the medium, C, yeah. Because I think Novo technically only offers like the medium C and then the chunky. Or maybe super chunky, I don't know. Jess car, medium frets, is that what I have? I don't know. If my spec sheet is full. Doesn't have everything on the spec on this one that they gave me. Uh, let's see, what did I? Um, yeah, twenty-two just car medium frets, twenty-five and a half inch scale length. That's pretty standard. Yeah, really cool colors. Uh, Brett Papa, I think you should get one for sure. Maybe get a HSS one. I think I'm going to keep this traditional Strat layout for sure, but um, I might put those Fralin uh, 
split blades just for uh, something interesting. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. I know some of you are just joined, but uh, I got a lot of housework to get done today. And uh, yeah, prep for the holidays coming up. So stay warm, everybody. I know we're going to get some cold weather. Some of us, most of us are going to get some cold weather next weekend. So wear a jacket. Brush your hair. You guys, I started following this guy on Instagram. This uh, New York Italian food food vlogger, and uh, he's I thought he was hilarious. Uh, do you guys know who I'm talking about? I'm gonna say his name if I can find it. Uh, I don't know if he's on TikTok or whatever, but I can't find it. Instagram is not uh, cooperating. not working anyways merry christmas happy holidays uh have a good new year next weekend is that i think that might be christmas eve there's a really good chance i won't be live streaming on saturday next saturday so if i if i'm not have a good holiday enjoy your time whatever you do um hope it's relaxing Whatever it is you do, if you celebrate, if you don't celebrate, I hope you have a relaxing couple days, if anything. And um, we'll catch up. I'll put some more videos out, hopefully, uh, next week. And um, be sure to follow Ben Coombs, or the mighty Ben Coombs for his live streams. Steve from Boston, live streaming later today. <coughs> Make sure you uh, subscribe to all of us. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for a great year. Um, thank you for watching all my live streams and uh, listening to me talk about gear and, and stuff. And there's definitely going to be more of that next year. Hopefully more lesson videos because I haven't done any lesson things. I'm making a plan of attack for next year, guys. I've been kind of slacking it the past couple months. And uh, that's because I've been secretly planning my, my next year attack. Take care. Brush your hair. Yeah, who says that? There's like this uh, this uh, Italian New York guy who's always talking about uh, the pizza he's eating or, or whatever. And it's hilarious. I'll find it. Happy holidays. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you next time. Joe Coy out. Mario Sepp.